In the last lecture, we spent time talking about the mean or expectation and its properties, most important one being linearity. But let's step back now and think about what is it that the mean means? Why do we care about it? We have this intuitive idea that if you do things long enough, uh, if, if you keep experimenting with the same uh, random variable collecting its values, its long run average will be about the same as its mean. Now we're gonna try to make that more precise. So we're gonna talk about the topic of deviation from the mean, or as I like to say, what does the mean really mean? Why do we care about it? Well, let's look at an example that's familiar to get a grip on the specific ideas that we're interested in. So suppose I toss a fair coin 101 times. Then I know that the expected number uh, since the, all the values from 0 through uh, 101 are possible, and the middle value is the expectation, uh, it's 50 and a half heads. Now, I'm never going to get exactly 50 and a half heads. The probability in 101 flips of getting 51, 50 and a half heads is 0, because there's no way to flip half a head. Um, so you don't expect the expectation in that sense. No given measurement, no given experiment is going to yield the expectation. The expectation is this thing that we expect to come out on the average. Well, we can ask, what's the probability of getting as close as you could hope to get to the uh, expectation? Namely, what's the probability of getting exactly 50 heads? Uh, and it's about 1 13th. Or uh, if you ask, what's the probability of getting either 50 or 51 heads being within plus or minus 1 of the expectation? It's about 1 7th. Okay, let's flip more coins and see what happens. This time I'm going to flip 1,001 coins. Uh, and again, the expected number of heads is 500 and a half, which I'll never get exactly. The probability of getting exactly 500 heads is 1 39th, and the probability of getting within one of the expectation, that is either 500 or 501, uh, heads is about 1 19th. Now these numbers have gone down from the previous numbers. Remember it was about 1 7th and we've gone down to 1 19th. So it's actually, we're less likely to be within a fixed distance, within one of the expectation when we flip more coins. So as the number of tosses grows, the number of heads gets, le gets less likely to be within any given fixed distance of the mean. But things get better when we start looking at percentages. So What's the probability of being within 1% of the mean if I toss 1,001 coins? Well, 1% 1 of 1,001 is about 10. So we're talking about 1% 1 of 1,001. And the probability of being within 10 of 505, that is to say the probability of being uh, within 510 and 490 is about... 0.49, it's almost 50-50, which is not really so bad. So we have a 50-50 chance of actually being within 1% of the expected number when I flip 1,001 coins. So what we can start to say is that when we're trying to give the meaning to the mean, if I let mu be the standard abbreviation for expectation of r, I'm doing that just so it'll fit on the slide nicely in formulas, so mu is the expectation of r. The basic question we're asking is two, two basic questions. One is, what's the probability that the random variable is far from its mean mu? And, and you could phrase that as, what's the probability that the distance from r to mu, the absolute value of r minus mu, is greater than some amount x? And the second question that we want to ask is, what's the average deviation? What's the expectation of the, of the distance between r minus mu? What's the expected value of r minus mu? Uh, now, of course, we're trying to make sense of the meaning of the expectation in terms of the expectation of the distance between r and its expectation. So there's a little bit of circularity there, but let's live with it and proceed. Let's look at an example to crystallize the ideas a little. Let's look at two dice with the same mean. Uh, the green die is going to be a fair, a standard fair die in which uh, each of the numbers 1 through 6 has an equal probability of showing up and its uh, expect expected value is exactly going to be the midpoint between 1 and 6 um, or 3 and a half. Now suppose I look at a loaded die, die 2, um, which only throws a 1 or a 6, but with equal probability, uh, then its expectation is 
also three and a half by the same reasoning. So here are these two different die. One takes the values one through six equally likely, and the other takes only the two values one and six, but they have the same expectation. So how do I capture the difference? Well, if I look at the expected distance of the fair die to its mean, uh, I claim it's one and a half. But the expected distance of the loaded die from its mean, same mean, remember, three and a half, is actually two and a half. In fact, the second die is always exactly two and a half from its expected value. Uh, let's look at the PDFs to get a grip on understanding what's going on. So here's the PDF for the fair die. Um, the, uh, they're over one through six, the probability is one six. So each of those green uh, uh, spikes is columns is one sixth uh, high and their total is the one is the probability that the fair die takes one of those values one through six with equally like with equal likelihood. Now the expected value is exactly in the middle at three and a half and the average distance of these points well you can see that a third of the time you're at distance a half a third of the time that is when you take the values two and five you are at distance exactly one and a half and another third of the time you're at distance two and a half when you take one and six and that averages out to the middle value of one and a half so the expected deviation, the expected distance of the fair die from its mean is one and a half. On the other hand, for the loaded die, as we said, it's always exactly two and a half from its expected value, which means its expected value is also two and a half. So we can start to see the difference between these two uh, distributions and these two kinds of die by, even though they have the same expectation, one of them is more likely and has a, a, a a greater expected distance from its mean. And the moral of this short piece is that the mean alone is not a good predictor of a random variable's behavior. As you might suppose, one parameter, one number, is not going to capture the shape of a PDF, which gives you the more full information about the distribution of values of a random variable. And we need some more information than just the expectation, uh, and, ex uh, and especially valuable extra piece of information that's still well less than the overall shape of the PDF of the random variable is knowing its probable deviation from its mean.